And the inner transformation that takes place it must penetrate into the brain, into your consciousness. Denying our senses, it is not about resistance. You must shift your focus. What are your desires? My name is Fazila Bijo, and my desire is to help you on this channel and others connect with these teachings. If you know about manifestation and the law of assumption, you will surely have heard about this particular teaching, which is deny your senses deny the external world, deny 3D. Too many people are getting this wrong. In this week's video, we are going to be exploring this in more detail. The teachings are based on Neville Goddard's book, The Law and the Promise, chapter eight through The Looking Glass. You've been manifesting all your life. The thing is that while you cannot strictly get it wrong, you could be far more effective where things may be slow or challenging or hit and miss, what you can do is up your manifestation game, improve how you create your reality and become more effective as a master of your life. What Neville's teachings help us do is to understand so that we can apply the teachings for ourselves. When I realized that Neville's teachings were, are really for a way of how to create our lives, Florence Scovel Shin talks about the game of life and how to play it. This is what all of these teachers have actually done. They've left us a clear, comprehensive guide and a path to creating our reality. Now, in 2021, when I first got to understand Neville's teachings, I made a commitment to study every day and to apply the teachings. Not only did I become more confident, I feel so much more peaceful. I resolve issues that may come up for me in my day-to-day -day a lot quicker. I'm not saying that I never have any problems. I'm saying that I can bring myself a lot quicker back to my balance and inner harmony without hours or days going by. I'm sitting in that issue or an extended period of time. In three years, so much has transformed on deep, meaningful levels, from creating an online business, to my relationships, to writing a book, to creating new programs that I have taught internationally, and programs that continue to support others in their path of evolution and growth. But personally, my confidence, my level of awareness, the spiritual transformation, my inner peace and harmony, are just some of the things that have transformed from the inside out. My desire is to help you and others like you connect with the teachings, connect with the wisdom, connect with an understanding of how you can apply this in your life. Join me this week so that we can explore why Neville called this particular teaching through the looking glass. In terms of the law of assumption, there is a very, very key departure point. What do you desire? When Neville talks about desires, he talks about basic desires being words of promise or prophecies. And these words, these desires, why it's so important is that your basic desires carry the plan and the power of expression. What are your desires? When you have an objective, it is your unconditioned consciousness, your imagination that actually brings forth a desire. And what is a desire? It is something that you would love to experience and to have. And this is what it really is about. Each one of us has desires, which are objectives that we wish to obtain in life. And God, your I am, speaks to your conscious state of mind through your basic desires. So often people will ask, where do I get my desires from? When we look at desires as taught by Neville is it is God it gives you as man, the conditioned consciousness, this desire of what you'd love to have, what you believe you need. So from your present concept, from what you believe to be true of yourself, you believe that there are certain things you, you would love to have. And that is what your unconditioned consciousness has given to you. It seeks to achieve some things based on who you believe yourself to be right now. When you stay in your current state of consciousness, you will continue to desire that which you desire currently. However, if you want to change your desires, change who you believe to be. Case in point is, if you desire to be a millionaire, you've got to change your current state of consciousness that says 
that you are not a millionaire. You want to change your concept of self, which is all your beliefs about yourself, to become the millionaire. To achieve those objects you desire, it must penetrate into the brain, into your consciousness. You cannot just have it come through and stop at your senses. When we rely on our senses, we assume that what we are seeing as a state of lack is true, but it's not true because we are not held together. We are not joined together with our environment. We are not interlocked, which means that if you can see and visualize something that you wish to have, you can change the external environment. But in order for that desire to be objectified, to be realized in your 3D reality, your desire must first become part of your consciousness. What you observe in your reality are current circumstances in your life. To change it, you must shift your focus. You become fully immersed in your imaginal scene. It must become alive. You must actually feel it so real in your imaginal senses, greater than what is sitting outside. So when your 3D world says you don't have the partner or you don't have the job or you don't have the money, you must in your imaginal senses, your senses, your inner vision, your inner hearing, your inner sense of touch must be feeling it is real on the inside before you see it materialize on the outside. So to deny the senses is to withdraw from 3D. But a lot of people get this wrong. This is not about resistance. You do not resist what is outside of you. You must fully recognize your desires are your consciousness seeking embodiment. So when you embody it, when you become it, when you, it becomes part of what you feel in your body, you will see that your consciousness changes and you are able to express what it is that you are only seeing in your imaginal world becomes your reality. Neville reminds us that man is all imagination, but it is your approach to imagination that's going to make all the difference for you. Because you must come from it from a perspective of beyond what you just see, what you hear, and what you are aware of just through your physical senses. Because what you understand and interpret through your senses becomes the meaning you give to your reality. In terms of imagination, you are not a tenant. You are the landlord. And you take ownership of your reality. Someone who is a landlord can do as they please with the property because they own it. A tenant, on the other hand, cannot have the same liberties as the landlord. As the landlord of your reality, you do not have to accept how things are currently appearing. You own your reality and you therefore create it. You create it through the power of your imagination. And you are the one that's creating your reality all the time. You take ownership of your reality, and which means that you do not have to accept how things are currently appearing in your life. The Neville says that man is not aware how important this ability to look beyond the looking glass, to look beyond what his senses is telling him really is. It is actually an important discovery. So what you see, what you hear, and what you do, it becomes very important that you look at this from the perspective of your faculty, the power of your imagination. When you do this through your senses, you must be physically present in imagination. It must be in the first person. It cannot be as the observer. So how do you ensure that you are physically present? It is the difference between watching the movie, which is in the third person, and participating, acting in the movie, which is first person. You will experience things in imagination as they ought to be. And as I mentioned, you must actively participate in the scene. It must be vivid and lifelike. And it may very well be something that you have never witnessed before, but you are to feel it, bring all of your senses into the scene and know that it is real for you. You must think from, which actually means... You live inside the story. Have you come across stories of Hollywood actors who stayed in character for the duration of a movie? Now that's living inside the story. They 
see from the eyes of the character. They think as the character. They feel as the character. Playing that character throughout the duration until the movie is complete. And that is what you are to do. Until your desire has not been objectified in your 3D reality, you live in that story as being real. So your conceptual awareness is about you seeing things as they ought to be. The concept that you wish to live and have in your life is what you will actually become aware of. You will not look at the perceptual awareness, which is seeing only through your senses. You only become aware and you live from the concept of your awareness, which means here we go past the senses and we change reality within. This week's case study starts with the following. VH writes into Neville and says, two years ago, I was taken to the hospital with a serious blood clot condition, which apparently had affected the entire vascular system, which was causing a hardening of arteries and arthritis. A nerve in her head had been damaged and her thyroid was enlarged. Now, she says the doctors could not agree on the cause of the condition and all their treatments were completely ineffective. She was forced to give up anything enjoyable and she had to remain in bed most of the time. Further on, she says, my body from hips to toes felt as though I was encased and bound by tight wires and I couldn't put my feet on the floor without wearing heavy hip length elastic stockings. I knew something of your teaching and I tried very hard to apply what I had heard, but as my condition grew worse, I could no longer attend any of your lectures and my despondency grew deeper. One day, a friend sent me a postcard picturing the scene of a lovely beach by the ocean. I looked and looked at it and began to remember past summer days at the seashore with my parents. For a moment, the postcard seemed to become animated and flooding memories of myself running free on the beach filled my mind. Here she's experiencing that this postcard has evoked memories of a time gone by when she was in full and complete health. And she said that I felt the impact of my bare feet against the hard wet sand. I felt the icy water running over my toes and heard the crash of waves breaking on the shore. She says to Neville, the imaginal activity was so satisfying as she lay in bed that she continued to imagine the scene day after day for about one week. In a previous video, Have Imagination Will Travel, you will see something very similar from one of Neville's students who was also sick in hospital. And she uses the time while she's lying in hospital to visualize her travels to the wonderful exotic islands in the West Indies. So when she comes out of hospital, she finds out that she won a competition she had entered months ago. Everything that she had imagined was actually part of her travels. My previous video from last week also speaks about dealing with a health issue. So you can use these case studies to model your imaginal scene to actually apply to your own life so that you can enjoy and have complete recovery and health. She further says, one morning I moved from my bed to a couch and had started to sit up when I was seized by an excruciating pain in my entire body and I became paralyzed. She says she could neither sit up nor lie down. The terrible pain lasted for more than a full minute, but when it stopped, I was free. It seemed as if all the wires binding my legs had been cut. One moment I was bound, the next moment I was free. Not by degrees, but instantly. VH. I would love to hear from you in terms of what insights and what teachings will you apply. In this week's video, when we look at denying our senses, it is not about resistance. It is not about resisting what your 3D reality is. It is only about the mental transformation and the inner transformation that takes place in your subconscious mind, where your subconscious mind fully, fully lives from and as the person 
whose desires are already achieved. Please remember to like, share, and to subscribe. Join me in next week's video where we'll go through another case study around how you get past your senses so that you can penetrate and implant your desires into your subconscious. My name is Fazila Bijo, and it is my pleasure to have had you along this week. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.